Hey, what's going on guys? Fetz here with another commentary for you. Some more chopper gameplay, this time on Caspian Border. Once again flying with Kremis as he works on some more helicopter unlocks. Uh, this is from the same night. It's just the two of us on still. We're not with our full squad. Um, we do die a few times in this video, but we put on a pretty good show and pretty effective. Kremis ends up with, I think, 16 kills. And... Uh, I thought it was a good backdrop to talk to you about how our squad employs a coordinated vehicle strategy or top-down approach I like to call it. Uh, there's several stages to this and I'm going to bullet point them on the screen for you. The first one is that our jets provide air superiority, meaning uh, someone like Wretched Cookie who's really good in the jets provides us with the ability to fly uninhibited by enemy jets. And you're going to see the opposite of that in this video. Because it's just the two of us, I don't think we have any good jet pilots on our team. And we are harassed non-stop by their jets. We get uh, lit up multiple times. Uh, to the point where we end up spending much of the game below radar, just trying to dodge the jets. I do get one jet to overcommit on me and, and suicide. Um, but generally I'm just fighting for my life as we try to find their vehicles and take them out. <coughs> Um, while dealing with enemy air. We do a good job of keeping the havoc suppressed, which you always should. If you're in the Viper, you should beat the havoc, at least until the patch comes out. Um, as long as they don't sneak up on you with it and catch you off guard and you're aware, you shouldn't be losing fights to it. Um, so the first part of our strategy is the air superiority. And that's followed up by the attack helicopter denying enemy armor. Uh, basically, if we're not worrying about air vehicles, what's our objective then? And that's to, to kill all of their tanks and jeeps and uh, transport vehicles and to make sure that our troops on the ground have nothing to worry about except their objective. Um, you can see here I'm having some lag issues. We had a storm roll through and my internet got really bad. Um, but I do, I do die. One of my deaths is from the lag, putting my chopper in the ground. But other than that, uh, I, I managed to deal with it. Uh, so after the helicopter denies enemy armor, armor uh, the next step is for ground troops and friendly armor to suppress the enemy infantry. Meaning if they have no tanks to worry about, no attack choppers to worry about, then all they have to worry about is killing infantry. And if they're in a tank, uh, you know, an allied friendly tank, uh, that should be pretty easy. Uh, you know, and then they can capture flags or plant MCOMs or whatever they have to do. Um, after that, ground troops, uh, meaning generally the guys in our squad that are not in a chopper jet, are going to be spotting enemy armor for us, spotting enemy air vehicles for us. Um, at the same time, they're you know killing killing everyone they see and capturing flags. Um, but that's important, you know. We don't have a lot of spotting in this, and you see like in the video where I'm just flying around looking for armor to kill, and I don't always see it. I fly over tanks that I miss. Um, so spotting from ground troops is huge. If you're, you're playing solo, guys, spot uh, spot enemy vehicles. You know you get points for it. And maybe your your chopper pilot will come take care of it for you. Um, so the next bullet point is that Allied armor assists in the anti-air mission when no immediate targets exist. So if, assuming their tanks are dead, there's no one shooting RPGs at them, and they're just capping a flag. There's no reason they can't point their CITV station to the sky and lock up an enemy helicopter or enemy jet. At the very least, they're going to annoy and distract that pilot, and if um, all goes well, they're going to get a kill. I have a lot of times where Krupp's in a tank, and he is a huge help in uh, destroying enemy air vehicles, Ma mainly the attack chopper and helping me out with that. Um, the next bullet point is that the chopper, myself, I, when necessary, I assist with the anti-air mission. So, for example, if Wretched Cookie is going up against a really good jet pilot who has position on him and he's not able to shake him, he might say he needs help. At that point, my desire to kill tanks and infantry is definitely outweighed by the fact that I don't want to lose my chopper to a jet. So I'm going to help him at least break that lock and uh, get position on that jet in any way I can. I think that the anti-air superiority has to take priority for the attack chopper, meaning definitely everyone knows you go after the enemy attack chopper first. 
but at the same time, jets can be a lot of hassle um, on certain maps like this one. Uh, so just being able to help out with that should be priority, and then you come back. I don't know what just happened there. That was crazy. That jet rammed me into the ground here. And uh, I saved the chopper, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, this technique. Uh, but I get the tail rotor caught on this shed, and uh, this is one of my deaths, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the bullet points, you know, just being willing to help out and keep, your, keep the skies clear so that you can continue doing your mission in the chopper. Um, so <clears throat> here we get a we get a new chopper and we're coming back in the action and uh, we have we have a lot of threats this game uh, but we do have I, I give a lot of credit to the other players on our team that are captain flags because you know without that um, we definitely wouldn't have won um, but I'm just trying to you see me st at this point just staying low all the time. Uh, because every time I, I even get above the treetops, these jets are just after me. And I, I don't know if our, uh, I've been paying attention too much. I don't think our jets get up in the air too much. And here I get pretty high, uh, which is pretty risky. But I immediately get back down to the ground. And there's the jet that crashed coming after me. You just heard it in the background. And I always get a real thrill out of that, actually. It makes me feel good. Uh, so I come in here and blast this tank. I try to help the guys cap them, neutralizing Delta. And uh, we're having a good time, you know. Uh, getting in the Viper is just a lot of fun after you spend a lot of time in Havoc. And lately, it feels like I'm always getting the Havoc. Uh, we get on that rotation where it's like air vehicle map as Russians, and we play another map, and then we're back to an air vehicle map. And right there, that guy, he didn't flare in time. If you're if you're up close with the chopper, uh, your flares aren't going to distract that anti-air missile. Uh, so I, I, he does that a couple times in this video, whoever's flying does. Uh, I just get in close and, and let them rip with the AA missiles before Krimis can even lock up the, the laser designated AGM. And uh, that's usually pretty effective against um, probably a less experienced pilot there that doesn't realize the flare early. Um, but I'm taking more fire and here I'm just trying to help these guys at Charlie um, neutralize and cap. And I get some hit markers, but I have to. I have to run, and here you're going to see, I don't know what I hit, but if you notice how I bailed out, and my gunner, Krema, stays in the helicopter, um, I almost feel like I'm selfish, I don't want to share this tip, but this is a really good technique I've developed. If you if you hit an inanimate object, light post, tree, whatever I hit in that scenario, um, and as the pilot, you bail out immediately, uh, a good percentage of the time, Look at the jet flying by after me, the tank shooting at us. Um, yeah, we really struggle to stay alive in this game. That's another death here. Um, but if you bail out as the pilot, your chopper immediately, the engine shut off or something, and they, it stays alive. You know, it'll just come crashing down, but in one piece. And then your gunner can jump out and repair, which is a, another pro tip, guys. Always play engineer when you're flying a helicopter. Always. Um, but yeah, usually I can run back and repair it, or at the very least, uh, you know, whoever's flying with me can jump out and repair. And even if I die in the bailout, um, I can spawn on my squad mate and get back in. Um, so that's a pretty good tip. Uh, I've recently started doing that or figured out how to do that. I think we took an RPG there, I'm not sure. But I a lot of damage and uh, I'm just trying to recover and run him back to our spawn um, just because there's so many threats so I'm just staying below radar so the jets can't lock on me and, and uh, running back Kermis is yelling at me right here to flare up so he can hit that laser designated target but uh, I really just wanted to get to a safer position first <laughs> and then let us re-engage uh, the the flying low it, it looks funny it took me hours to develop that skill uh, so I definitely suggest if you're learning to fly or in that intermediate stage, uh, just stay in here. This is another example. The guy flies too close to me and doesn't fly in time. <clears throat> and I make a mistake. I didn't finish him off. I got a little arrogant and took off thinking he'd die. I get lucky. I get the kill right here. So he went down with his chopper. But uh, that was a pretty poor decision because he could have landed and repaired and come back to cause me a lot of problems. <clears throat> uh, but it pays off there. But that, that's a good learning scenario. But like I was saying, if you're a little bit newer pilot, stay above the treetops, stay above the light post. Uh, you're still pretty low to where jets are going to have trouble with you, but um, 
it takes a while to develop that skill of um, control. Here's my internet connection again. Jeez. But, you know, at the same time, as you learn to fly this chopper, and the only way you can do this is just practice. You know, I flew the co-op mission a lot while I was learning. Um, and I wish I didn't game audio here. Krimis is screaming, There's a tank behind us! A tank behind us! He's gonna get us! And uh, I repair and get in and spin the rotors up and return and take out the tank. Um, but yeah, the co-op mission is really good to learn to fly between buildings and trees. Uh, and then you can bring that in for multiplayer. And uh, don't be afraid to die. I mean, it, it stinks losing the chopper for your team. And, uh, you know, I get frustrated seeing guys wreck. Uh, but I wreck a lot still. And that's how you learn, you know. As long as you learn from that and figure out, okay, well, I know the Viper will fit under the street sign as long as I do, do it this way. And to keep my tail rotor down instead of flaring up, <clears throat> which is the key to that trick right there. And I'll fly into that to break, break fire and, and locks from jets a lot. Um, but I only do it if I have the right approach. You know, I'm not doing it to look cool. I, I actually will fly into like the bridges on Wake Island to, to protect my chopper from enemy fire. And uh, you know, it's a definitely a valuable skill for an advanced pilot to learn. Uh, so it's something to work on and strive for. But this was a this was a fun game. I, I, I don't mind getting a lot of hits from jets. And, uh, here's another bailout, and this is a great one. I actually die. I don't get my chute deployed, and I get revived. And uh, Kremis is able to save the chopper, and uh, I run back over and jump in, <laughs> and we go right back into the action. Uh, I've got a real kick out of this. This is never. It's not very often you land where you can be revived and get back. Uh, but that's a, a couple times this game where I've used that technique. And, um, you know, whether it's intended to work that way or not, I, I don't think I'm taking advantage of a glitch or confusing a game mechanic. Um, it's just the way the game's designed, and it works. Uh, so it's not it's not the same as getting hit by an enemy and, and escaping with some cheap tactic. You know, that's something where. Um, you know, I just hit an inanimate object, and I go down, and, and if you do it right, and you have the skill to do it, you can save the helicopter. <laughs> Here we take a, an awkward death. Uh, a stinger, apparently, uh, off the hilltop got us, and I, I didn't think our health was that low, but I think it killed me out of the cockpit somehow, but it was from, from the angle it would have been coming from behind us, so that was a little bizarre. Uh, but as the game winds down here, we, we get back in the chopper and get one more quick little run at a, at their havoc. And uh, I almost got that kill. <laughs> and we take out a jeep here at the end, which was I always like chasing down jeeps real low between trees. Uh, I get I, I think that's fun. And it looks pretty cool. Um, I see them kind of running like a like a scared little rodent running from a hawk is what I feel like. Um, uh, that's pretty much the game. We come back here and float around Charlie looking for whoever got that kill on our teammate there. And, um, just let the game wind down. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about our strategy. I'd like to hear kind of how you how you do it or your your feedback and thoughts on it. This is something we've been developing for a while. You know, the weakness is it really relies on everyone being on and getting in the right vehicle. Uh, but when it works, when, when we get Wretch cooking a jet and me and the chopper and corrupt in a tank, for example, we we tend to have an immense amount of success doing it. Uh, to the point where it's pretty overpowered, but it's uh, it's enjoyable. Uh, so, uh, it's been another chopper game for you guys, and I, I hope you enjoy it and learn something from it. Uh, this is Fets for 11 Bravo, and uh, I'm out.